Hello everybody, this is the Veek Strand. Today we're going to talk about espionage movies. Now, I love espionage movies. I've said so on multiple occasions. And uh, I was so hyped back in 2006 when this movie was going to come out. It had more stars than the sky. It had Robert De Niro in the director's chair. And it had the return of Joe Pesci after many years of being out of the movie business. And it was going to be this big, almost three hour long epic about the forming of the CIA. Did it work? Not all it could have been, but it's still a pretty good movie. Let's take a look at it, shall we? This is called The Good Shepherd. follows Edward Wilson aka Matt Damon from 1939 until 1961 you know through the uh, World War II and the coups and the uh, fight with the Soviet Union and the deflectors and the assassinations and stuff like that and you know how he is drawn into what would then become the CIA and how it you know hollows out his soul and you know grinds him down um, over time. The movie has so much going on for itself. It, you know, has, as I said, it has so many movie stars. Damon, Jolie, Baldwin, Kudrup, De Niro, Gambon, William Hurt, Lee Pace, Joe Pesci, Eddie, Redmayne, John Turturro. All the stars are, are here for this one. It had, you know, the ambition of being the, basically the godfather of espionage movies. The ambition was so big and I felt that probably was not the correct media to you know put this one in. I don't think this should have been a movie. I think this should have been an HBO 10 part miniseries with with you know with the same budget and the same you know cost basically. You could have crafted this into an absolute stonking good miniseries. Now I don't really like TV shows but a miniseries I think it could have been really really great because it has too much story for the 167 minutes that it's got. But the movie also sometimes grinds to an absolute halt for some odd reason. And, and I got really restless from time to time because nothing really sticks. Nothing really registers in this movie. I mean, there are great sequences. You would have liked to stay and see more about it, but you're just moving on, whoosh, moving on. And uh, while Matt Damon is really good in this one, I think that uh, Angelina Jolie either is terribly miscasted or terribly written. I don't know what it is. It feels like she's, you know, in the wrong movie or has walked in from a totally different movie. Anyway, so while the, I have some complaints about it, I'm mostly annoyed because of what this could have been and it ended up being, well, not all it could have been. This movie has great performances. This movie has great production value. You know, the ambition of being something grand, something spectacular. And I think they actually planned on this being a trilogy or something like that. But because of a so-and-so performance at the box office, Future Plans was basically scrapped. I will say that this movie is a good one. The movie is filled with, with great moments and it is filled with great sequences, but as a, it feels a little hollow and it, you know, can't quite get through entirely. I don't know if Robert De Niro was the right man to direct this one or if it is simply the case of the movie got too ambitious and uh, they couldn't focus enough. I, I do recommend this movie. I like the time period. I like the performances. I like most of the stars in this movie. And it is a fascinating story about the man who effectively loses his soul due to, you know, the bureaucracy and the horrible stuff that the CIA has done over the years. And especially, you know, in the 50s with all the coups and stuff like that. Effectively, you could have made a movie just about the World War II and the post-war Berlin you know, sequence into one movie. And it would have been great. But now we're getting well a little bit too much and at the same time the movie kind of drags on you know on some occasions so it isn't perfect the movie kind of under delivers what it could have been but i still think it is a good movie but it's a little bit too long and usually i give long movies some lenience but in this case it doesn't really work as it should have 
with an amazing cast, an absolute masterclass in production value and the feel of a big time movie, this movie still ekes out 61 points. I think this movie is so ambitious and it should be applauded for what it attempted to do, but it couldn't quite get there. But it is not a bad movie, but um, I'm just not that invested into the whole thing. I don't know whose fault it is that this movie couldn't quite cross the finish line, but I think at least it should be watched so you can, you know, make up your own mind, because I think it's a good movie. So I'll see you next time from, well, so-and-so reviewing, well, such-and-such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.